Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Heidi Roth and I'm a registered dietitian with Tufts Health Plan. And today we are going to be making two six ingredient meals. We're going to be making some roasted salmon tacos and then we will also be making a spicy black bean bake. So just for purposes of what our six ingredients are, I did not count things like salt, um, vinegar, um, I've got a little bit of sugar here, olive oil. Those are things that we typically would have in our pantry anyways, so I didn't count them in the six ingredients. But starting first with our fish tacos, we're going to be making a roasted salmon taco. So our six ingredients are, is I have a pound of salmon here. I have some mini flour tortillas. I have some sour cream, a little bit of either chipotle powder or chili powder. Today I use chili powder and then limes. Oh, one last thing, then also our coleslaw mix. So those are our six ingredients, coleslaw mix, limes, tortillas, sour cream, and chili powder and salmon. That's six, right? Yes, that's six. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do to get started with is go ahead and cook my salmon first. So I'm going to take my lime and kind of roll it out and get some of the extra juice out there a little bit. And I'm gonna brush the salmon with some lime juice and then sprinkle it. Oh, but you know what? What I forgot to do first is to zest it, but that's okay. It'll be fine. So I've got here my little microplane zester. Um, if you don't have one of these, these are amazing. They're so nice. They just make zesting a lime really easy. Um, not quite as easy after you've cut it already, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of zest from the lime and mix that in with my chipotle powder or chili powder. And the rest of the lime juice, I'm going to squeeze into my bowl and then brush it onto my salmon. So the other little handy dandy kitchen gadget that I have is this little juicer. I love these things. Um, if you do get one of these, they're really inexpensive on Amazon. I would recommend getting the stainless steel one. I did start off first with one that was painted. It was a really pretty yellow, um, but that ended up flaking and I had to throw it out after putting it in the dishwasher. And, you know, part of this is having the convenience of, you know, just being able to throw it in the dishwasher. So I'm going to take my lime juice and brush it onto my salmon. Um, the salmon I have is a salmon uh, that I just picked up at Trader Joe's this morning, but it is a farm raised salmon. So if you can get your hands on some wild salmon, that's even better, a little bit healthier, but you know, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, wild salmon can be pretty expensive sometimes. So, the farm raised also has lots of nutritional benefits as well. Uh, it's just not quite as high in antioxidants as the wild. Um, and it's also a little bit fattier too. But I do find that for people that, you know, are kind of new to salmon, sometimes the farmed salmon is a little bit less fishy tasting. Um, but just, in, you know, in terms of the better salmon, if you can afford it, the wild salmon even is better. So I've got here my, now my little spice mix. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that and put it on top of my salmon. Any questions so far? Now let's say, what could you do if you didn't like fish? What, what else could you put in your tacos? Well, you could substitute several different things. Um, you could use chicken. And, and if you wanted to make it a vegetarian meal, um, what, what I've been loving lately is um, shiitake mushrooms sauteed are amazing in tacos um, and a lot of health benefits as well. Um, or you could just use a can of black beans. We're actually going to be using black beans in our next dish. 
So certainly that would be a nice substitute as well. And what I would do is if you use the black beans, just mix, heat them up, mix in a little bit of the chili powder, a little bit of lime juice and zest in those black beans um, as well. Okay, so now I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in um, for about 10 or 15 minutes. And actually for our purposes today, I'm actually gonna cut this piece of salmon in half because it'll cook quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that in half. And then put that on. Um, you'll notice that it does have the skin on it. And the easiest way is really just to bake it with the skin on. It'll help it from sticking to the pan. And then afterwards, just kind of flake it off of the skin. Um, most people don't really enjoy eating the skin, but it's actually quite delicious if you crisp it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my oven. and get that started warming up. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to make a really quick, fast little slaw to go with this. And then also um, a little bit of lime crema. So what I have here is a coleslaw mix. So it's just shredded cabbage, um, a little bit of carrots. If you can't find a coleslaw mix, I know the Trader Joe's by me, what they sell is they just sell plain shredded cabbage. That works very well also. So for this, I'm, you know, kind of cheated a tiny bit. Um, we're gonna use some vinegar. So I assumed everyone had vinegar in their pantries. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use a quarter cup of vinegar. It's not really counted in our six ingredients. And then also a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar. We're gonna do one teaspoon of sugar and one half teaspoon of salt. Just kind of sprinkle that around. And what the sugar and salt do is they actually are gonna draw a little bit of the juices out of the cabbage and um, make it, and that'll make it a little bit crunchier. And then we'll do a half teaspoon of salt and then mix that in all together. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna check and see if I have any questions so far. And um, doesn't look like we have anything so far. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to mix this slaw actually, um, if you want to start with this first, you know, just because of the time constraints that we have today with our webinar, I wanted to get the salmon in the oven, but it's really kind of better to do this, if you can, even up to an hour ahead, it'll pull more of the juices out and it'll be even a little bit crispier. Okay, so there's my slaw. And one of the benefits to what I love having these coleslaw mixes in my, I kind of, it's kind of a staple in my fridge, these coleslaw mixes, because you can put them on tacos, you can throw it onto a sandwich, you can kind of throw it in with a salad. And it's just a really easy, quick way to get some extra cabbage. Uh, you can saute it. And cabbage is one of probably the healthiest vegetables. I know it's kind of the lowly cabbage. It doesn't really get much fanfare, but it's really high in vitamin C. It's also high in um, sulfur. It's considered a cruciferous vegetable. So like kale and broccoli and cauliflower. And these sulfur compounds, um, they do two things. They, number one, are really potent anti-cancer fighters. And they also help your body make its own antioxidant, something called glutathione. And so anytime you can help your body out, um, that's a good thing. So lastly, with our fish tacos, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna make my crema. So here, what I have here is some whole milk yogurt. Um, you can also use sour cream, either one. 
And what we're gonna do here is make something called a lime crema. And lime cremas, you know, are typically just a mixture of, some people put a little bit of mayonnaise in there too, but basically it's just some lime, just, lime zest, lime juice, and either the yogurt or sour cream. Um, and then some people add a little bit of, of mayonnaise to it as well. So once again, taking my handy dandy zester and my lime, just gonna go ahead and zest it. And the, the zest is really where you get all of that lime flavor from. You know, lime juice, it tastes a little acidic and adds a really nice brightness to it, but it doesn't taste limey. You don't automatically kind of taste lime juice and think lime. Now, with the zest, that's where all the flavor is. Another nice good thing about the zest is that it also contains a lot of unique antioxidants that you don't find inside the lime. So all citrus actually has some unique antioxidants that are found in the citrus peel, but not in the actual fruit. And look at that gorgeous green lime color. And if you were here, you could smell, just smells very limey now in my kitchen, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna take that. And depending on how juicy your limes are, um, you know, you can either add all the juice to the lime or half a juice. These limes are pretty big and they're actually fairly juicy. If you'll notice it, I kind of rolled it out first before I cut it open and juiced it. And what that does is it just breaks down some of the plant cell walls and helps to make it a little juicier. So I'm gonna use my I was looking for my fork. It's just kind of automatic. Sometimes if I just have a half a lime to do, sometimes I'll just grab my fork and zest it that way. But I've already got my lime zester out. So I'm gonna add that. And then we're good. So mix that around. There is my quick and easy lime crema. Now the last thing that we want to add to this is some salt. And so I have my little Himalayan pink sea salt, very fancy, right? <laughs> I'm gonna add that and maybe a little tiny bit of pepper. Okay. And actually so far, I see we have a good group here today, so. Got my lime crema ready to go. I've got my coleslaw made. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take my tortilla shells and then I want to warm these up. So two different ways that you can warm these up. These are the little mini, I accidentally bought the flour ones. What I really meant to do was buy the corn ones. I think corn are a little bit better in, the, better in this, but the flour ones will do too. So either one, whatever your preference is. And there's, there's two ways. If you have a gas stove, what one nice, one thing I like to do is just put them right on the stove, right on the flame and kind of um, char it just ever so slightly. And they'll puff up a little bit and it'll get a really nice flavor to it. The other way that you can do it, if you don't have a gas stove, is just to put it in the oven and warm it up that way. Just take your piece of tin foil, put your tortillas in there. Yep. The, the corn ones, especially, you want to make sure you heat up. These, you know, are fairly flexible. If they don't get heated up, it's not a big deal. But the corn ones, if you don't heat them up, they tend to crumble and break when you try to fold them. Um, but they're much more pliant once you Okay, so I see a question. Somebody asked how much um, sour cream did I use? So I used three quarter cup of sour cream um, with this. And I did not use any mayonnaise because that would have added an extra ingredient. Um, but you know, typically sometimes a lot of recipes for, for crema will call for mayonnaise, but not all of them. You don't, it's not absolutely necessary. Um, 
if you did want to use a little mayonnaise, I would just use a tablespoon or two and just add it on top of the amount of sour cream or, or yogurt that you're, that you're using. I would definitely recommend if you are using yogurt, use a full fat yogurt versus a fat free yogurt. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven along with my salmon and then I'll just check on the salmon. Yes. Salmon's coming along nicely. It just needs another minute or so. And then I will grab it out of the oven. And I'll get my plate out for my tacos. Okay. So while we're waiting for the salmon, which will just be another minute, we'll make, I'll let you know what the next dish we're going to be making. The next dish we're going to be making is something called um, cheesy, spicy black beans. Um, they are so delicious and so quick and easy um, with six ingredients. So what are the six ingredients for these? So the six ingredients for our next ones, I have two cans of black beans, one and a half cups of, of shredded cheese, um, and I would be more than happy to share these recipes as well. Um, at the end, what I can do is maybe try and post them in the chat box so, so that you can get the recipes. Um, and then I also have two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Paprika, smoked paprika is just basically what they do is they take the chili peppers and they smoke them. Um, much like you would be making paprika where you dry peppers here, what they do is they take the same peppers that you would make, use to make paprika and they smoke them first. So if you're following a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet where you're not having any, you know, ever adding any um, maybe bacon to things or if a recipe calls for like sausage, this is a really nice thing to add because it adds that smoky flavor. Um, I find that I go through a lot of smoked paprika. It's one of my favorite spices. Um, and then here we have a quarter cup of tomato paste. Now tomato paste is really nice um, because it's a really concentrated source of lycopene. Lycopene is an antioxidant that you only find in tomatoes. And for the most part, you find a little bit in watermelon as well, but the main source is tomatoes. But you get a lot more lycopene when you cook the tomatoes because you break down those plant cell walls. Um, you you, a lot more of the lycopene is available. And then look at this, I've got five cloves of sliced garlic, lots of garlic, and then some cumin, one teaspoon of cumin. So that's going to be for our next dish. So while I, let me get those, actually, let me, check, let me just go check the salmon. I see a question on when do you know if salmon is cooked? Salmon is cooked when it is opaque. So let's go grab our salmon and we'll take a look and see if it's cooked. Okay, so I'm taking a look at this here. This piece looks like it's, it's done. It's opaque in the center. So this one is going to be done. And this one, let's take a look at this one. And it should, this, this is still kind of pink in the center. This was the bigger piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece back and then we'll take this piece and we'll put it on our plate. And we'll make the tacos with these two pieces. Okay, the rest, let me go ahead and put it back. And grab my tortilla shells. Okay, so I'm just gonna set those aside while we make our cheesy black beans. And then once these cheesy black beans are in the oven, we'll make our tacos. So cheesy black beans, let's go. We're gonna start off by cooking first the garlic. 
just for a minute. You wanna make sure that you're not burning the garlic. Garlic can burn very easily and if it does, it turns bitter. So typically you'll never see a recipe that will cook garlic for more than like 30 seconds to a, more, to a minute by itself because you don't wanna risk the, uh, burning it, but to toast it a little bit is, is nice. So I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of olive oil and I'm gonna eyeball it. Um, you know, if you have a little more, a little less, it's okay. Um, olive oil is just one of those really heart healthy type of fats that can also help decrease inflammation. So I'm, I'm good if we have a little bit extra of it. Okay, so we're gonna take our five cloves of garlic and I've already kind of sliced them very thin. I'm gonna add them into my olive oil and let them get started there. Okay, so I see a question here. Um, let's see. I see here a question. Somebody asked, can you recommend a lower cost fish that may have some of the similar benefits of salmon? Um, that is a really good, good question. So any type of fish is going to be really heart healthy. Um, fish, in addition to uh, you know the omega threes that you might find in a fattier fish like salmon or herring or mackerel um, or tuna, any type of fish, even the cod, is going to be heart healthy. It's just not going to have as many omega threes as the fattier fish. But what fish does is it has uh, different minerals. It has a mineral called selenium. Selenium is also one of these really important minerals um, it, that it acts as an antioxidant. So the studies have really shown that any type of fish is beneficial. So, um, you know, a cheaper fish, you could use something like even monkfish. I actually made fish tacos last night. I borrowed a friend's air fryer and I made um, monkfish tacos. Um, monkfish is a, a fish that's caught off the coast of Massachusetts. It's not a very pretty fish, but it also is one of the less expensive types of fish. But, um, you know, if you're buying salmon frozen, that's sometimes the best way to do it because it, that makes it a lot less expensive. And um, you just have it there ready to go anytime that you want. I often will buy a big bag of um, frozen, you know, even the wild caught, I'll, I'll buy at Costco, a big bag of it. And then they're individually kind of wrapped. You just take out what you need and um, it's good. Um, let's see. I'm seeing here somebody, somebody also commented that if you have access to Market Basket, Market Basket is a great place for fish. They have a lot of frozen fish. So really great point that frozen fish is going to be a lot cheaper than um, any type of fresh fish that you get. Uh, let's see. Someone said, is commenting that they used the citrusy garlic seasoning from Trader Joe's and made black beans last night. Um, okay. So, and they also used pickled jalapenos, which are so delicious in tacos. Uh, instead of that, sometimes in tacos, you'll see pickled onions, pickled jalapenos. What we're doing with our coleslaw mix is we're kind of making that pick, that kind of pickled type of flavor that you would get. Um, all right, so our garlic now, you'll notice that I've had the garlic in here for maybe a little bit more than a minute, um, but that's okay because my, pan wasn't really preheated. So now I can, I'm smelling the garlic. It's starting to, you know, toast up a little bit. So let's add the rest of our ingredients in. So we're going to add in our two and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika. Um, and then and I used a little bit more paprika. The recipe, this is a New York Times recipe. The recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons. I used a little bit more because in cutting down the ingredients, I actually cut out the chili, um, the red pepper flakes. And so because of that, I'm just using some more chili powder. Um, but if you go, um, you know, if, if, if you have some extra ch um, chili flakes at home and wanted to use them, that would be great. So here I've got that. And then we're also going to use one teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin seeds. And we don't wanna let this burn. We're just gonna kind of mix it all together and 
toast it a little bit. And the pan that you use, you'll notice that I'm using a um, cast iron pan. And the reason I'm using a cast iron pan is that they, number one, this recipe looks kind of pretty in a cast iron pan, but also when you, it's oven proof. So you want a pan that you can just throw in the oven because it'll be even easier. So I've got that. And now I'm going to add in my black beans and then a half a cup of water, boiling water. So I've got my water here. And you know, and it doesn't, if it's not boiling, it's fine. Um, what you're basically trying to do is because you have all of that um, tomato paste in there, we want to kind of mix up that tomato paste and make it a little bit juicier. So um, there's a, also another recipe that's very close to this in the New York Times and it's a cheesy bean bake as well, but they use white beans. So you could certainly use a different type of, of beans. Um, and then lastly, we just want a little bit salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay. Okay. So I've got this going now and I'm going to put this in my oven and take out the salmon. That other salmon should be done by now. And then we'll put our fish tacos together. Okay. So now I've got that all mixed together. And now for the best part, <laughs> in my opinion, I've got one and a half cups of cheddar cheese. You could also use like a manchego cheese and we're just gonna sprinkle that on top. And this is, you know, here's the, the cheesy part of it. Um, if you wanted to do this as a plant-based dish, you could either use a plant-based cheese or just even skip the cheese altogether. Um, it would still be good. Okay, so this is still cool enough to touch right now, but obviously when I take it out of my oven, I'm gonna need to grab some oven mitts because it's gonna be super hot. Okay. The salmon is looking done. Um, it is nice and flaky as well. And so um, that's gonna be good. So let's assemble our tacos. Let me just check real quick first. Are there any other questions um, that came? Uh, no, I see somebody says, what do I think of um, tilapia? So tilapia is typically a farmed fish as well. Um, you know, almost always it's 100% farmed. It is less expensive, but I'm, you know, tilapia really isn't one of my favorite fishes because it's really high in omega-6 fatty acids versus omega-3s. So it's not, even though it's a fish and it's still healthy, um, it's not quite as healthy as some of the other fishes because of the amount of omega-6s. And basically omega-3s decrease inflammation, omega-6s kind of ramp up inflammation a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, you know, a piece of salmon and put it into my taco. And then I'm going to add in my slaw. So I've got my nice cabbage mix here that I'll add in. And if you've ever made pickled onions before, pickled onions would also be amazingly delicious in this. You know, pickled onions, it's just kind of the same thing. You mix some onions with a tiny bit of vinegar and some salt and just a little dab of sugar. And then um, I keep them in my fridge for quite a while and uh, they're quite delicious. Um, not only, you know, on, tacos, but on sandwiches, just to add into some eggs. If you make some avocado toast, they're amazing on avocado toast. Okay, and then I'm drizzling it with the lime crema here. 
And there we go. There's our fish tacos. I don't have that little taco stand, but here you can see, I'll put it up to the, um, I know that light is quite bright on my <laughs> video camera. So here you can see, I've got my fish tacos. I've got my salmon, the lime crema and the crunchy slaw as well. And um, these are, I'm gonna have some happy boys in my house uh, when our <laughs> session is over today that there'll be some fish tacos waiting for them. Fish tacos are always a big hit in our house. So there you go, quick, easy, simple, six ingredient fish tacos. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, move this out of the way. And and then here, I cheated a little bit. So what I did is I put it in the oven and because of just time constraints, I wanted it to kind of cook a little bit more quickly. So here we have our cheesy black bean dip. And you can see it's kind of bubbly and the cheese is kind of browned and melted. Um, so what, what, could we, what could we do with this? Well, so, you know, we're, we're only doing six ingredients, so you could just eat it as is. Um, if you wanted to, it would be delicious on top of like a baked potato. Uh, it would be really good. You could also put it in some tortilla shells. So I, I always have these tortilla shells in my freezer. It's just kind of another one of my staples so that, you know, if somebody wants a quick snack, you can just grab one of these. So what we could do is we could also make some tacos with these. For those people that, you know, maybe didn't want fish or wanted a more plant-based taco, vegetarian taco, we could also make some like that. Um, you could also put it on top of brown rice, would also be delicious. And so there we go. We've got our black bean tacos. Now, once again, this slaw could also be used on these tacos as well. So we could put a little bit of slaw on here as well. Um, but once again, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to. I'm just kind of doing this because we happen to have it. Um, but this, you know, even if you just grabbed some tortilla chips and just, you know, served it as a dip, that would also be really delicious. Um, you know, I know my family might be excited to actually have like tortilla chips for dinner and uh, <laughs> that would be a treat for them. So here we go. Here, is one way to serve the spicy black bean and cheesy black beans. But also, you know, you could just put it in a bowl and just eat it that way. That would be delicious as well. Maybe if you have a little bit of avocado or chopped cilantro would also be delicious on both of them. But once again, you don't absolutely have to have it or, or need it. Okay, so I'm, we actually have some time for questions now. So I'm just looking down at my computer for some of the questions I see here, uh, do you freeze the tortillas individually or do you freeze them separately? Usually, honestly, what I do is I throw the whole bag in the freezer um, and then I take it out and they're stuck together and I wish, oh, why didn't I freeze them separately? So <laughs> freezing them separately, um, you don't run the risk of them sticking together. But you know, maybe what you do is divide them four in one bag, four in another bag. Um, sometimes what I just do is I take the whole bag out, I let it thaw, and then kind of pry, pry them off with, with a knife, um, and then just keep the whole bag out. You, you typically don't want to thaw food and then refreeze it again. The quality of it is not usually as good. So once I take it out, then I just leave them out and we just use it up for, for the week. Um, but if you took a look, like if you wanted to you could take a little piece of like wax paper and put it in between a little piece of parchment paper and then that wouldn't be be an issue uh you just make sure that you don't keep them in there for that long they do end up you know usually like a, more than a month they start getting a little freezer burnt so just make sure that they're wrapped up tightly and um, that you don't keep them in there that long i also keep frozen brown rice in the freezer so that you could have some of this on top of brown rice so some nice rice and beans 
um, you know, the, the possibilities are, are kind of endless. Here, someone says, um, I opt for broiling the fish to brown the top and the beans to melt and brown the cheese. Okay, yes, absolutely. So let's say that you didn't want to do salmon. Let's say you wanted another type of fish. Broiling it is a really great way to go as well um, because it'll kind of brown it a little bit more. I do a lot of sheet pan salmon, a lot of just sheet pan dinners. So for me, I'm kind of just used to, to roasting it, but certainly broiling it would, would also work out very well. Um, so we have a little bit of time left too. If anybody feels like um, unmuting themselves and asking a question, you can certainly be, I'd be happy to, to answer some more questions. Um, if you had, I'm hearing something popping over on my stove and I'm wondering what that is, but let's just be the, the fish skins kind of crackling a little bit. Um, but certainly if you had some other questions that you wanted to ask, we have another um, about nine minutes or so before we have to sign off. Uh, feel free to, to unmute yourself. And even just uh, any questions about the equipment. Um, oh, just a last note too about the cast iron skillet. Uh, if you're low in iron, Using a cast iron skillet is good because what it can do is it actually you get a little bit of the iron from the skillet, uh, especially if you're doing something like a tomato based sauce like like we're doing here. Um, but if you don't need any extra iron, um, you know, not really quite as important. You could certainly use another dish as well and just another heat proof pan. I have some all cloud pans that I like to use. Um, that are oven proof as well. I would not use a nonstick pan unless the nonstick pan is rated for the oven. The temperatures here are too high for nonstick. So this is a 425 degree um, and especially because I broiled it, that's, a, that's even hotter. So just make sure that you're not using a nonstick. Um, some of those nonstick pans are not really meant to, to be put into to high temperatures like that. So, all right. Here's another question. Uh, can you talk about how to care for a cast iron skillet cleaning and seasoning? Great, great question. So when I clean this, I don't use any soap on it. So cast iron skillets, they build up a seasoning. Uh, typically when you buy them nowadays, they come seasoned already. But um, if for some reason that you have a pan that needs to be seasoned, um, typically what you do is you rub it with oil and then you put it in the oven and you bake it at a high temperature. Um, and it's been a while since I've seasoned mine. So I don't, um, let's see, I not quite remembering the exact amount of time, but what it does is it actually kind of creates these polymers with the oil that was on there. Um, and it creates kind of almost like a nonstick coating. So cast iron pans are great because you kind of, if you, if you have a well seasoned cast iron pan, um, it, it kind of creates this nonstick coating on it. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping the seasoning. So when I wash it, I'm very careful. I use like a little scrub brush and some hot water. Um, if something is really stuck on there, I let it sit for a while. But with the cast iron pans, you have to make sure that you don't, um, you let them sit wet um, because they can rust. So when you take it out and you're done washing it, I always take a paper towel. I dry it very carefully. If you have something that's stuck on there and you need a little extra, sometimes putting in some coarse salt and just taking your dishcloth and rubbing it around with that coarse salt is enough. Um, but then once again, make sure you rinse it really well, dry it, don't use any soap. Some people even put it in the oven to dry it off even a little bit more, but um, I found that if I just, you know, dry it, it's fine. Some people, after each use, they actually rub a little bit of oil on it. And if you do like to do that, if you find that you don't use it all that much and you want to put a little oil on it, something like a coconut oil is really good because a lot of the vegetable oils, if you just let them sit on there without being seasoned, they can go a little rancid and sometimes give an off taste to some of the food. So a coconut oil is a really, really stable oil um, that you could use. I don't tend to do that. I just put it away and I use my cast iron so much that um, it, it really is not, not, not a big deal. Um, let's see, any other questions from anyone? 
not seeing any extra. So um, I guess at this point, we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you all could, could join me today. And uh, bon appetit. Hope you get to make something, something delicious as well for, for dinner tonight. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Oh, and thank you for putting your video on. It's nice to see you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Bye now. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>